tea and I have a problem buying a lot of it. Hi, I'm Valerie. Welcome to my channel, History is Important, and today I'm going to talk about historic teas or historical teas. At this present moment, I have four historical themed teas. I enjoy all of them very much. I do not have a sophisticated palette that I can tell you what hidden notes and such are. I'm just gonna show them to you and be like, this is good. And this is where I got it. So let's do that. First one um, I got in Boston. As you might have guessed, since it says Boston Harbor Tea, 1773 to 1774 is what it says. It says it's from the original sh uh, shippers. On the side, it has a little information blurb about the Boston Tea Party, how, you know, colonists dressed up as Indians um, boarded three ships in Boston Harbor, threw tea overboard, didn't destroy anything else. They dressed up as Indians to show they were identifying with America and throwing the tea overboard and not destroying anything else was saying, we reject your taxes on tea and um, this is an anarchy, this is a planned protest and we're Americans, we're rejecting British culture, etc. So it says that three months later, um, in 1774, a second Boston Tea Party occurred with the brand of tea that this is, which is from Davison Newman and Co. Um, or it also says no duty, it's payable now, which is cute. Second tea that we're talking about today. Loose tea from the Ben Franklin uh, Museum in Philadelphia, made by Oliver Pluff and Co. The next three um, that I'll be talking about are all from this company. They seem to specialize in colonial teas, which I enjoy very much. Um, so yeah, it's a loose blend tea, smells very good, and um, <laughs> not that you can smell it because smell vision and YouTube don't exist yet, and uh, it's got some pictures of like Independence Hall in Philadelphia. That's really cool. It tastes very good. I like it a lot. You can pick it up in the Ben Franklin gift shop. And Valley Forge tea! Yay! This is also a loose tea. Mm, it's a green tea. Um, it's called Pinhead Gunpowder, which I'm very amused by because it does vaguely look like gunpowder. Um, it's just your pretty much standard green tea. It tastes great. Um, you can only get this at the Valley Forge Encampment Store in the Visitor Center at Valley Forge in Pennsylvania as well. Um, and the back has a little historical blurb of what happened in Valley Forge, which if you don't know, um, pick up a can of tea and you can find out. Again, this is from Oliver Pluff & Co. So, um, this is the only Oliver Pluff & Co. tea I have that is in tea bags. And this is the first one I picked up from that company, actually. And it's, um, exclusively, exclusively for the Morris Jamel Mansion in, uh, Upper Manhattan. And, um, it's an Earl Grey blend, which I love Earl Grey. And, um... You know, it has information about uh, the Morris Jamel Mansion, it's Manhattan's oldest house, it was built in 1765, and etc, etc. It's up in Harlem, it's really pretty, and I need to go back there and visit it. And I saw they had tea, and I was just flipped out, and the guy started laughing at me. And, um, yeah, plain little tea bags. Oh my god, it smells so good. The back says, a leaf from America's tea heritage, which Oliver Pluff and Co. seem to do very well, so... Way to go to you, Oliver Pluff and Co. And um, yeah, you can get this in New York City at the Morris Jamel Mansion. My teas. This went by a lot faster than I thought it would. I really enjoy tea. I like drinking it. I know it's not really American after, uh, you know, everything happened with the colonists being annoyed at England. We very uh, purposely moved away from drinking tea. It was kind of seen as a trader's drink. Um, Non-importation was in effect. And, um, you know, tea was something that was imported to the colonies. And if you were participating in non-importation, then you would not be having any tea unless it was smuggled, um, which most people can do. Um, I actually have a quote here that from John Adams that he wrote to his beloved Abigail. And um, it's about he went traveling once and he asked for tea upon arriving at his destination. And the woman said, no, sir, she said, we have renounced all tea in this place. I can't make tea, but I'll make you coffee. Accordingly, I have drank coffee every afternoon since and have borne it very well. Tea must be universally renounced. I must be weaned, and the sooner the better. So this was kind of a universal 
point of view on tea. Um, people liked it, but they quickly learned to drink coffee or just not have a hot caffeinated beverage. It's weird to be buying tea at all of these things, I guess. Maybe. Who knows. Um, but I buy them anyway, and they make me happy. And they taste good. So if you like teas, and you like history, I can't hold the other one. I don't have enough hands. Um, maybe check them out. Let me know what you like, if you've tried them, if you've tried other ones from other historical places, because I feel like they're kind of like Pokemon and I gotta get them all now, because they're so good. A video about histories, historities, historical teas. I hope you enjoyed it. Happy tea drinking!